All right. We're back at it. Back in the shop. All right. Um, so, if anybody was paying attention last time, this is my single seat Dazon with the Polaris Predator front end. And last I left off, I made this terrible elongated swing arm for the Yamaha Warrior motor. And honestly, it made me sad. I had this independent rear section from a twister hammer head sitting in my backyard. Originally, I was, uh, I guess, I don't know if you call it lazy or just afraid to do the work, but um, started taking a look at it and uh, realized that it would work. And it did. Worked out really nice. The, uh, the thing I was worried about when originally thinking about this swap was I was looking at these bars right here where the original twister hammerhead uh, frame was, right? This stuff, this one, that one, and this one. This The square that that creates right there. That's where the original seats for the hammerhead were mounted. And my problem with this, every time I was taking measurements with the single seat days on here, was always going to be this mount right here. This outboard trailing arm mount is wider than most of the 150 buggies. Even the two-seaters. It just comes out too wide. So I already had the Nerf bars built. So it just so happens that that met up with the Nerf bar really nicely. So it uh, made that connection. Then there's a connection at the shock tower right there. And then there's these two connections behind the seats. And then like I was saying earlier, every one of these buggies, every one of these Chinese buggies, whether it's a 150 or a 250, all put square stock in where the seats mount up. They all have square stock in the floor pan area. Every single one I've ever seen at least. So my goal was to match up the 250 seat square stock with the 150 seat square stock. And that all joined up really nicely. Listen, I'm not a professional welder. But I know that's not going anywhere. Not the prettiest in the world. But like I said, I'm doing this hobby style and I think that works. Everything I've put together so far, like the front end and other swing arms and stuff, nothing's ever broken. So, uh, you know, I know that there can be comments about shitty welds and these certainly are some pretty shitty welds. But I can promise you that there's penetration and that they absolutely are fused to the new machine. So, with all that out of the way, here we go. It is, once again, I think maybe two inches longer than the stock wheelbase, but better than in excess of nine inches longer than the stock wheelbase, which is what that elongated swing arm gave me, and it was terrible. So, now then, <clears throat> the matter of the shifter, because just to update, we got us a three-pedal buggy, and a Yamaha Warrior motor coming in here, so I absolutely... One thing I hate more than elongated swing arms is a clutch lever on your shift lever. I hate that. I wanted a three pedal buggy and that's what I'm building. So anyway, what I was getting at was shifting is going to be 
eternally easier now that I don't have a swing arm to deal with. And uh, I was talking about in the last video, bump shifting. Kind of like bump steer, but when the uh, suspension comp compresses, it shortens. I think we all probably know this, but when the suspension compresses, it will es essentially shorten this shaft. So it'll want to it'll want to shift when it when when the suspension bumps. So bump shifting is no good. So there we have it. We have a fully independent single seat. Kind of, I guess we'll call this a mini cross cart. And uh, yeah, it's, it's um, I, you know, I, I wish I would have done this from the beginning because of how nicely it turned out. Um, let me just show a detail real quick. And this is what actually made me think that this would work. Um, when I'm looking at, you know, my buggy, the original buggy is the red stuff. So this bar, this bar, and these three bars that are in there, they, not from this angle, but they all line up. That's just the seat angle of the 250 and the 150. So I just line them all up and I have to say, aside from maybe adding a bar from here up to here, I'd say it looks pretty factory. Looks like it belongs on there. Now, I'm sure that's up for debate, but listen, after an entire summer of building the stupid elongated swing arm and having to completely scrap it, I have to say I'm pretty happy with uh, what I turned out towards the end of the summer here. So that is a large engine compartment. I, by the way, I have brand new trailing arms, brand new spool, brand new axles, all waiting for this thing. This is all mock-up, but uh, there's the old Warrior motor. It's ready to go. A little engine cart. But uh, yeah, I have all the stuff. There's the axles. Spool bearings, hubs, got it all. So that's what we got. Um, about to put this warrior motor in here and hopefully gonna get a rip soon. So that's it. You know, when I was a kid, I was about 10 years old, first time I saw a Honda Odyssey and uh and the pilot and you know all those buggies obviously i like the pilot better than the odyssey those j arms and rigid rear were no fun to drive but um once i drove a pilot i pretty much knew what i wanted which is this right here because the only thing the pilot's missing is the third pedal oh actually any pedals really which is the only thing i really never liked about the odysseys I like pedals. I like driving like a car or a go-kart. So that's what I built. Fully independent, long travel, Fox podium, float, suspension, whatever the hell they're called. This thing is going to be bad. And, uh, you know, finally, when I finally get it on the road again, because last time I had it on the road, it was a liquid cooled 250 a CN 250 as we've all seen on some of these China buggies and uh, you know it was cool and all but just wasn't all that happy with it I wanted to shift gears wanted a clutch wanted the ability to do all that so here we are I'm almost done it uh, I suppose I will post another update video sooner than later but 
that's what we're going with. Until next time. Don't take no shit.